Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin, brought to you by First Star Logistics. And today, we catch up with Reds catcher Tyler Stevenson. This young man has it all. He can hit, hit for power, tremendous throwing arm, all the skill you need as a defensive catcher. The baseball gods have not been kind to him. He has suffered injuries. Boy, the injury bug, broken thumb, concussion, broken clavicle, collarbone. Amazing. So hopefully the baseball gods will be kind to him and he will have a career like none other because he can get it done. And I think you're going to like what he has to say about the Cincinnati Reds. Thanks for joining us in the trenches with Dave Lappin brought to you by First Star Logistics. As always, we are in studio at First Star Logistics, as always, and we are joined by a very special guest, Tyler Stevenson. I'll tell you what, happy birthday, by the way, August 16th, right? Yep. Yep. So how old are you now, Tyler? 26. 26. 26. Wow. I can't remember 26, but I, I'm sure it was fun. <laughs> that was a little bit a while ago, but the pride of Kennesaw, Georgia, about yes, that. born in Atlanta. Played uh, your baseball at, uh, let's see, I got to make sure I say this right. Kennesaw Mountain High School. Mountain High School. There we go. Kennesaw Mountain High School. Fun fact. Uh, when, I, when I was younger, I did a project for class in the first original, like the first commissioner of baseball. His name was Kennesaw Mountain Landis. That's right. Can, I remember I remember seeing that in a movie, Kennesaw Mountain Landis. Yep. Um, and when you were a freshman in high school, your high school baseball coach allowed you to call pitches. You know, he had that much faith in a, what, 14-year-old kid? Yeah. How big a deal was that? <laughs> and how, how instrumental is that high school baseball coach in your success today? I mean, really, I mean, the guy had to be big, right? Yeah. Um, like, so Metro Atlanta, it's, it's a baseball hub. Uh, it, I, I mean, I, I feel like every year there's always multiple first-round picks coming in somewhere in the Metro Atlanta area. Uh, I played travel ball at East Cobb, which is a huge organization down there. And yeah, freshman year, I remember my coaches telling me that in order to go to the next step, you're going to have to learn how to call your own games. And sure enough, 14 years old, who knew? <laughs> I'm sure I didn't have it figured out. I still don't. Um, but the more times that I can just, you can be back there and you can just learn the game and see the game, uh, the answers will always present itself. So, yeah, I mean, I'm very fortunate uh, to be at a young age to be able to be given that opportunity. So were you pretty much focused on baseball from Jump Street, or did you participate in other sports, Tyler? Uh, baseball was number one growing up. I started playing three, four years old, whenever <laughs> T-ball would start. And I played basketball throughout middle school. And I was going to play in high school, but I ended up quitting right before uh, freshman year. It just, it just got too much with baseball. And my senior year, actually, I, well, I was on the swim team. Really? My, my sister swam at Florida State. So I've always been around the pool and swimming. And I was like, yeah, why not? Senior year. I loved it. And I did it my first couple off seasons. I probably need to get back into the pool. And, I mean, the shape I was in was incredible. Wow. So your sister swam at Florida State. Now, who was the athlete? Rhonda, your mom, or David, your dad, or both? I mean, to have a, a professional baseball player, a collegiate swimmer. Do you have any other siblings? That No, that is it. That's it. So uh, were both your parents athletes themselves? or No. Uh, really? My mom, my mom was in the band. And really? My dad played some college, or not college, some high school football. Um, my uncle, my mom's brother was a quarterback, uh, at a small D one or like, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know if it was D one. He was at a small school in South Georgia. Um, my grandfather actually just passed away not too long ago was, he was a huge baseball fan, played in high school, but never played in college. So, um, we love sports, but it's not like I'm from a crazy bloodline of professional athletes so when you were picked 11th in the draft man 11th pick and you decide you know going to go right into professional baseball i'm sure you had georgia tech i think it was wasn't it that you yes, were going to think about going to and decide ah 
forego that and go right into the major leagues. What was that like? What was that like for your family when you were and yourself when you were the 11th pick in the draft? Yeah, it, it was it was pretty surreal. Um, I've always it's always been a gold mine to play in the major leagues as pretty much every other kid growing up who plays baseball. Yeah. And uh, I just stayed dedicated. I had a goal and I stuck with it. And it really wasn't like I was never a huge prospect my uh, freshman, sophomore year, even really into my junior year. I didn't like it was my junior year that I kind of grew into myself. I was always tall, but I started to get like strong. And I was a late bloomer. And it wasn't really until my senior year that I was like, man, I could possibly be getting drafted. And um, so I go into my senior year uh, early on in the season, I hurt my oblique and I was out for three weeks or so. And at that time, I was like, all right, I'm going to go to Georgia Tech. And my parents did a great job. I never got, I was never too high in the, in the process of like, oh, they're scouts, or I was never really worried. Um, so my parents did a good job just keeping me humble. And at the end of the day, like I remember my parents sitting down, it was like the worst case scenario, you're going to go to Georgia Tech on a full ride scholarship and get, get an education to play baseball. Like that, that's pretty, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so that I feel like helped me just, to go out and play and have fun, which I did. And I, I played with my, all of my friends. Those are all, they're still my closest friends of the day. And sure enough, I come back from that oblique injury and I swear the baseball was about that big and I played real well. And sure enough, the draft comes around and the Reds draft me at 11 and it was awesome. So into your career a little bit, um, you end up having a wrist injury with the Dayton yep. Dragons, then you go into the Arizona League rehabilitation assignment. You in, you meet Jesse Winker there, who's yep. rehabbing a wrist uh, injury as well. And you guys kind of got together and had discussions about plate discipline. How, how big was that relationship that you established with Jesse Winker that early in your career? Yeah, I mean, I, I was very fortunate to, to be in that situation because Winker at that time was kind of a higher level prospect. I think double A, like not far from the big leagues and like him he was a high pick and yes there's expectations and everybody wants to do well but you kind of being the first pick yeah like everybody kind of relies on you to produce more and um it was good just to have his input for me at the time being 18 19 years old and being away from my family and tackling major league baseball like i mean it's not easy it's a grind and uh, we spent a lot of time together, and I felt just that growth from that those I don't know a few weeks, a month, whatever it was that we spent together. Like it was great because he never we were talking about at bats, and like if you go out and have your bat at bat, your first at bat, there's so many times at a young age that that first at bat can just ruin your day. But forget about it; you've got three more. So every day you go up to a new, every time you go up to to hit, it's a new opportunity to get a hit. So. I mean, I still preach that today, and I mean, he, it worked for him. He's had a great career so far. Okay, talk. Uh, let's talk about uh, first at bat, because um, <laughs> this is unbelievable. I want to yep. make sure that I get this uh, this information right. You hit uh, a home run on the second pitch you saw from Dwayne Underwood. Do you remember that uh, that pitch? What was that pitch, Tyler? Fastball right down the middle. 94 mile an hour fastball. You turn on that bad boy against the Chicago Cubs. I, I looked it up. I, I think I counted right 131 players in the history of the game. Think of all the Major League Baseball players that have gone to the plate for an at bat. I mean, some guys just won at bat. There were famous, you know, stories about, yeah, I had a Major League at bat. Just won at bat. You're one of 131 that have hit a home run in your first plate appearance. There's only 31 that did it on the first pitch, and yours was the second pitch. You almost became a member of that even smaller group. Yep. What, was, what was that first pitch he threw you? I, I wish the first curveball that he threw was a nice one to hit. No, it, <laughs> I could have been a part of history then. Um, that's, that's amazing, though. Yeah, man. I, you know, I, just that whole year, it was 2020, prime COVID. Like, right. Um, so I don't know if you're familiar with it everybody but we had the alt site which was up in mason ohio 
Prasco, yep. Pra up at Prasco. Yep. And it was a Sunday day game. We were playing the game at 1 o'clock. Just we, we, we inter-squatted up there. Yeah. And our Trimmy, who's our field coordinator, pulls me aside. He's like, hey, pack your bags. You're going to the big leagues. I'm like, wait, what? And he was like, the, and the Reds were also playing at the same time. So, like, you got to go. We're like, you, the game's about to start. So I'm throwing going to the my, show. Going to the yeah, show. <laughs> I'm throwing all my stuff uh, in my bag. Hop in my truck. I'm driving down, what is it, 71, I think. 71, yep, and then, yep. I'm sure I was going faster than the speed limit, but if I got pulled over, then I think I had a good excuse. Good story, yes, sir. And calling my parents, calling my wife at the time, and calling everybody. Like, I can't really talk, but I'm going. And then uh, I think it was like the next day or the day before, or day after that, um, we were playing the Cubs and we were down 8 nothing. And Freddie, who's our bench coach, was like, hey, you're going to go in next inning. And I remember going up the steps, like, here we go. And then, sure enough, I get my bat. First pitch was a break from all the dirt, and then second pitch was a fastball right down the middle, and home run, and the rest is history. And I think it was two for two. And uh, on the back end of that, my last at bat was a bases loaded walk against Craig Kimbrell, and that was one of the more cool moments for me because growing up in Atlanta, yeah, uh, obviously he was a closer for the Braves for a long time, and. Awesome to be in that situation. It was it was cool for me. So no doubt. I mean, it happened. I think in 1950 was it the last time the Reds had a player that first at bat goes yard like that. So I mean, that's not uh, that's certainly not a, an everyday occurrence for sure. Um, the one thing that I do know is I I was a catcher. I was always a big kid, so I played baseball. And they're like, you got to get behind the plate, you know, and you'd be a big backstop anyway. Put on the tools of ignorance and. I swear, man, I got so much respect for you guys because I remember games where every foul tip hit me somewhere, man. Yep. I, they'd never miss me. Be like, what the hell, man? What? How do I? What do I do to, to prevent this pain? And you had you've had the broken thumb. Yep. I mean, you've had so many things. It, it's the tools of ignorance, man. It's no joke back there. When you when you're playing catcher in Major League Baseball, that's got to be unbelievable on your body, man. Yeah, I mean, I hate it, but things happen, and I know it's a part of a, the position I play that foul balls, and there's going to be instances where I do have a higher chance of getting hurt. Um, and I feel like after all this, there's always there's just all this talk like, oh, move to first base, and I'm a catcher at heart. I love it. Um, it's just bad luck this year. Let's move it on. Next year will be better. And right. um, but yeah, I mean. The amount of times I've had foul balls hit me, and I couldn't tell you the last time that I had one hit my hand or even my collarbone. So, yeah, I'm used to having uh, bruises and just bruises all over. It's part of it. Unbelievable. And then, you know, blocking <laughs> the plate. I know you sustained a concussion, you know, and blocking the plate. I mean, I remember <laughs> – I'll never forget this. and I can remember the guy's name, and this happened, like, you know, when I was, like – 12 years old and i can remember like it was yesterday paul caloris uh he's on second base uh, you know clean single i know he's going to try to round the a third base and he's coming and that sucker man he was a huge guy and i ended up being a bigger guy but i wasn't as big as him anywhere near as big as him and he ran me over man and the first thing that hit was the back of my head hit the ground and i held on to the ball he was out but i took a beating and i'm thinking wow th this is unbelievable i i can understand you know, concussions happening. I, you know, I, I know, I know for a little bit there, I was like, whew, I was a little woozy. There, there's some serious contact there. Yep. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah. So tell us about, you know, foul tip, the thumb, but then foul tip on the clavicle, on the collarbone. What are the odds of that happening? And, and what was that experience like? Take us through that whole process and how you've gotten over that and rehab that, man. It's crazy. The collarbone or the thumb? Do both. I mean, this this is crazy. Um, so, uh, I was catching. We'll start with the thumb. Uh, okay. The thumb happened. I was catching. We we're playing Arizona, and a breaking ball was thrown. And I'm like, I'm tracking the ball, trying to frame it, 
and it ends up being a foul tip. And my glove is going where I think the ball is going to go. And the, I mean, there was just enough space where my hand was exposed, and I get a foul ball that hits me right on, and it fractures in two spots. What are the odds, man? That's crazy. And uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of people like, oh, yeah, you need to make sure you tuck your thumb. And trust me, I've watched a game and watched how many guys are truly exposed. Like, there's a, I was watching our game the other night. We're playing the Phillies, and JT Ramuto took a foul ball, and his hit right above, uh, I think it was like somewhere on his wrist and the trainers had to come out. He stayed in, but like he didn't have his thumb tucked. Like it, it could happen to anybody. Um, sure. sure. So I come, I'm out for about a month and rehab. And then sure enough, I come back and then I played for maybe two, three weeks and then the all-star break and was excited for the second half. And then we're playing the Cardinals in third batter of the game, 101 mile an hour pitch, foul ball right to the collarbone. And at first, I stayed in the game, but I think from that impact, it was initially fractured. Because two pitches later, swinging bunt, I go to throw, I get back to throw, and I feel it pop, crack. Man. So it was a clean break. And then the bone ends up shifting when I'm asleep. I must have rolled on it wrong. And then and I ended up needing surgery. And here we are, I think, closing. On, oh, man. Jeez. I think it's three weeks this Thursday. But, I mean, it, it's much better. Like, I can, I can do – it's just rehab at this point and getting the strength. But I'm doing so better. Do you, have, do you have screws in there, or what do they have to do? Eight screws and a plate. So I Eight get a, in the plate. <laughs> I get treatment at the uh, airport now. I can maybe yeah. skip line because I have metal. <laughs> no question. All right. So I got to ask you, what what what's it like to have a walk off homer in Major League Baseball? I mean, what kind of a thrill is that? It was for it was Sam Howard who was with the Pirates at the time, and um, another thing that was that was the COVID year. So it would have been great to have people in the stands. And same thing with my first at bat. Like, whenever we play the Cubs, it's a packed house. So I couldn't imagine hitting a home run my first at bat against the Cubs in a packed house of Great American. And so, yeah, I, I pinched hit, uh, double header against the Pirates. Bowers pitching, and uh, he did well. And then we ended up having to go in the bottom of the seventh or whatever it was. And. He threw me a cutter, and sure enough, I flipped him to left field, and it was it was wild. It was fun. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's crazy. That is walk crazy. Off, walk off home runs are fun. So your your rookie year, I mean, you you uh, have a heck of a heck of a rookie year. You have a seven ninety seven OPS. Uh, your major league all rookie first team. You get votes for rookie of the year. Your teammate Jonathan India gets the award, but you got you got votes. At that point, was there a confirmation? It's like, oh yeah, no, I, I I know I can handle I can handle Major League Baseball. I mean, this was was there that kind of a feeling once that season concluded? Yeah, there was a lot of positives to look back on, and you don't want to be a, a one hit wonder. Um, so obviously, I was I was excited with how the season went, but I knew things that I needed to work on to be the best version of myself and the best player that I can be, and um, went into the off season and then I remember sitting at the dentist and get a notification Tucker's been traded. And, um, so the keys were passed over and I was like, man, at that point I was like, they believe in me. So that was like another little confidence booster that, Hey, they believe in me and what I can do and to help lead this team and lead this staff. Um, they're looking, they were looking for me to do that. And, um, Felt like it was going great this year, but I know it's kind of been messed up with all the injuries. But uh, we have next year and hopefully many more to come. And we we have a really good core group of guys that are here and more that are coming. Yeah, if the if the baseball gods are any kind of good spirit, man, they owe you a bunch of seasons without injury. I mean, you definitely have paid your dues with respect to uh, injury. There's there's no two ways about that. I mean, it's got to even up. And you got to be in a, in a situation where you're going to have some smooth sailing for a while. What 
What do you think your strengths are, Tyler? And what do you think is the biggest thing you might need to work on a little bit? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm prideful. I, I mean, I think some of my strengths, hitting the ability to hit, that's something that I've, I've always yep. taken serious. Um, I don't like giving at bats away, and I want to produce and help out the team any way I can. Um, ability to throw guys out. Um, I know this year I worked on some things in the offseason, got a strong arm, and that was something that uh, I felt really confident in and helped leading the guys. We have three young rookie uh, pitchers with Lodolo, Ashcraft, and Hunter. And that was one of my jobs that I really wanted to do and I'm going to continue to do is just talk with them because they're going to be looked at for the future. And um, I, li I like – I like what we have with them, and hopefully I never have to have any at-bats against those guys. Um, we're, we're, we're very fortunate. Um, but I know just some of the big things just to work on. Defensive, defensively, there's some small things and small adjustments uh, that we were working on this season, but it was tough because the inconsistency of playing and uh, just being hurt, it's, it's kind of tough to do and kind of get in-game reps. So that's really when it uh, when you need them the most. I'll tell you that Major League Baseball, I, I can't imagine 162 game grind, and I doubly can't imagine it because of my my experience is a little league, Babe Ruth league, you know, catcher at that up into my uh, teen years when I said, yeah, football is going to be my best option. Yeah, um, that uh, the grind of a catcher for an entire major league baseball season, mentally, physically, I got nothing but respect for you, my man. There, there is no question about it. And, and you're giving back. I mean, tell, tell me about the, the catcher's clinic put on by the Reds community fund that you're spearheading. Yeah. I mean, you're helping, helping the young guys, the future generation catchers. Yeah. Um, so that was something that Jr. who are, who's our catching coach, uh, we kind of talked about in spring training and, they did a great job just like publish, uh, publishing it out there and getting everybody involved and not only for like for myself, but for like the team and the instructors that we had in. Um, there are a bunch of them out on social social media who know what they're talking about. And for these kids to come in and to be taught catching and learn drills at a very high level, stuff that I do and that we do as a group in the organization. I mean, it's unique. Like, I, I, anytime that there's camps, it's always like pitching, infield, outfield, and like you, you've always got like three or four catchers. And like to be able to have a camp that is just for catching was awesome. Like, I never got experience to that when I was younger. It was always mm -hmm. a big giant camp. Yeah. Um, so it was great. We did a great job, and we're hoping to continue to let that happen or do it again next year and hopefully it could grow. And um, I know we, we gave out some prizes and hopefully next year we can get a little more and um, just be, the, be here for these kids and be a source and be around and have conversations. I know uh, having played professionally a while myself and having injuries and stuff, there's nothing better than having a great wife, you know, to help you deal with adversity and how, uh, how fortunate do you feel I mean, you're an intelligent, good-looking young guy, but I bet you've got an awesome wife that uh, is a big support system for you, isn't she? Uh, she she uh, she runs it all. She's, she's <laughs> got the you. brains. Um, I mean, I, I honestly would not be here without her. Just we started dating 2016, uh, so we've we've been through the grind. We've been through the grind of minor leagues, and for us to to stay together and do long distance for that time. Um, it's not easy, um, but she's definitely got the brain. She's a PA doing OBGYN with her dad, who's a doctor. So she's, wow. she's the brains, and uh, she was able to be here to take care of me whenever I had surgery. And uh, I mean, I can't thank her enough, and she's definitely the rock of us. She's wow, great. That's, a, that's, a, that's a great tandem right there. That's I, I know what you mean. I, I mean – the time that you have to spend apart that's underrated people don't understand how how uh you know that affects things it's and I, i've got a great wife too that just put up with a lot of things for a lot for a lot of years in terms of you know scheduling um and, and uh 
just whatever what do you have to do whatever you have to do i'll adjust and that's yep. how they are wives of uh, professional athletes and coaches and all that man they uh they're they're a different breed man they're 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 superstars they are incredible Absolutely. well it's uh been a pleasure catching up with you getting to know you i can understand why the cincinnati reds are so excited with tyler stevenson man you're you're a special uh special guy and i know you're gonna have a great career and I know you're looking forward to getting after it again uh, next year and for many years to come. Yes. I uh, can't come soon enough for next year and um, we're excited. I, I'm, it's it's going to be fun next year. Hopefully we can get everybody healthy and go out and play for a full year and show everybody what we're capable of and have fun. Cause Cincinnati boy, it's a, when, when, when it's rolling, it, it's a baseball town anyway. Yep. I've, I've been heard. around, I've been around for the big red machine, you know, and, Got to know a lot of those guys. Got to know Pete pretty well, and Ken Griffey Sr. and uh, a bunch of guys on that uh, on that baseball team. And man, the city was just rocking with the uh, Big Red Machine. It was absolutely insane. Tony Perez. I mean, the list bench the list goes on and on and on. There's a lot to that list. There's yes, a, a lot, a lot for sure. Best of luck to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, nothing but good health down the road. And and. Thank uh, you. And big numbers on that stat sheet. You're the man. <laughs> We're hoping so. Take care, Tyler. Thanks for everything. Thank you. Dave Lapham here. And every day, I am grateful for my experience to have played professional football. As a player, I realize self-motivation, leadership, and appreciating your teammates are key. At First Star Logistics, you can use those same attributes to create the life you want for you and your family. Build your future by working hard like I did. You'll see results both on and off the field. Call First Star Logistics today and be part of our winning team.